Well, hello there. How's it going? Happy Thursday. I'm so glad it's Thursday. I don't know about you, but I can so do with a full hour of thinking about nothing else but drawing. <laughs> I hope I hope you had a great day. I hope you're ready to pick up your pencils and get to work. Let me just see. Okay, I'm on both both screens, so I'm good to roll. Excellent. Um, welcome. If you're new here, if you're watching the recording, um, if you're here for the first time, my name is Carolyn Peters. I'm the owner of Kira Studios and I teach um, traditional drawing skills there and I'm kind of equipping artists with a really solid footing so they can find their artistic voice. And yes, Hannah, I'm so excited about cats too. Um, so um, just let me lay the land real quick. Um, if, you, if you're new to these sketch sessions, they're weekly. I do them every Thursday and um, they're kind of a place for you to come to. Um, so first of all, you have a community to draw alongside with. So you're not the only one um, lonely scratching away at your sketchbook pages. Um, but also, it's always a place to come to where you'll have a subject matter provided for you and a focus, like a certain lesson provided for you. And so it's like that becomes almost like um, the best combination of a, a, a gym for artists where you work out certain skills, you're strengthening certain muscles, but it's also kind of a playground and I kind of mush them together and mix them up and um, that's my goal for these sessions. So as I said, we um, cycle through different subject matter and we cycle through different focus. So subject matter this week is animals and in particular we'll be using cats as our models and the focus, the lesson is on how to use um, our understanding of the skeletal structure to make our drawings better. So um, let me let me kind of lay the land so you know um, what using the skeletal structure is useful for and what it's really not that important for. So and I think that's sometimes something that artists get mixed up so the reason why we artists study um, the skeletal underlying structure, whether it's a human or a cat or a horse, is because um, it, it supplies us with, um, first of all, really simple shapes. So we, we can look at the major masses. So the major masses are the head, the rib cage, and the pelvis. And depending on what animal you're looking at, those major masses might vary slightly in, in shape. But so it gives you a really good and simple starting point. Um, a sphere, an egg, and maybe a box, you know? So that's the first thing. The second thing is um, you can reduce all the details out like you don't have to worry about the lumps and the texture of the fur and the folds and all of that stuff or the feathers, whatever it is that you're drawing. And you can just focus on, on fine tuning your understanding of the length relationships of, of the, the bone segments. So how long on a cat is the upper arm in relationship to the lower arm in relationship to the shoulder blade? So that's what you're doing. You're, you're getting more fine tuned to these kind of um, surface occurrences where you might find little hints of them um, on the fur. So what we're not using our insight of, or our, our understanding of skeletons for, we're not using them so we can memorize um, the details. So we're not sitting there drawing individual vertebra, however fun that might be, um, but that would be a different focus. That would be just drawing details. So we're not sitting there counting how many ribs this cat has. Um, we're not sitting there count or looking at the, the particular shapes of the, the pelvis. We're, we're simplifying things down, reducing them down, so we can then use this reduction um, in, our, in our drawing. And I'll guide you through this. And um, if you want to put me on mute, by all means, um, just draw the, the, the cat reference once I switch the screen over. Um, or you just listen along and draw along. It's completely up to you. It's your time to draw. I have about an hour's worth of cat references. And the first ones are going to be really short because I want us to have a chance to warm up. So I'll have a few one minute poses and a few two minute poses. And in those poses, let's not worry about the skeleton. Um, but once we get into the longer poses, the five minute poses, 
um, then we'll, we'll talk skeletal structure. So let me flip the camera. And before I start the video though, I'm gonna show you a little bit uh, of what we'll be thinking about. So here we go. Um, I'm not hitting play quite yet. I wanted to share um, just a, let me just zoom in a little bit too. Um, what, what, the, what the skeleton on a cat looks like in its simplified way. So um, I highlighted the three major masses in orange. So we have, of course, the rib cage, we have the pelvis, and we have the head. So when we start our um, drawings focusing on the skeletal structure, we'll most likely always begin there. Hey, Lens, good to see you, <laughs> or see you typing. So we'll always begin with those three major masses, and then we'll start looking for um, the shoulder blades. So I want you to notice that the rib cage is egg-like. It's like an, a, a horizontal egg. It's fairly small. And then we have this kind of strange flat box that's almost like the letter J. You see that? So it's kind of kicking back. This is the sit bone. So when cats sit down, that's what they sit on. But it's, it's a very flat box-like structure. So those two we'll look for first. Of course, they are connected by the spine. The spine runs into the tail and also connects to the third major mass, which is an oval um, for the head. The next thing I want you to notice is this arrangement. The shoulder blades they're angling back. So the back of, or the top of the shoulder blades, they're kind of further back. And then when you get to the actual shoulder, that's further forward. So that's an important angle I want you to be aware of here. And then it's opposite on the back. So you're getting like almost like this roof um, structure. So that's gonna be really important. Um, upper limbs, look how short the upper arm is. The upper leg, hind leg is fairly long. And then we have our elbow and forearm that's really long in the front. Um, lower leg is fairly short in the back. And then we basically have our feet. So cats, they walk on their tippy toes, not like humans. Um, we plant our whole foot, um, but see how their heels are up in the sky. And see, these are the, what would be for us, the, the palm of the hand. So anyways, I wanted to show you this breakdown. So when we do get to, um, uh, the skeletal structure drawings, you can always um, later on pause, rewind, look at this again, um, and kind of bring this to the forefront of your minds. But with that, let's dive into some short poses. Let me zoom back out so I have a little bit more space to draw on. And so as I said, the first one, and Lindsay, since you're here, I think the first one is one of your kitties. Um, this is just a one minute pose. So, let me just grab my pencil and I'll hit play. Alrighty. So when, when we work on gestures, I like to begin with rhythms. That's just for me a natural way of making sense of whatever it is I'm looking at. You know, I'm gonna switch my pencils because this is too light. You can barely see what I'm doing here. and use these first few minutes to just get back into a drawing mindset. Uh, I don't know how your, days, what, how your day was. I certainly had a lot on my mind today. And I, I need that first couple of minutes to just kind of switch over, you know? Um, kind of let go of all the BS that might've happened during the day and kind of settle in. into just drawing, just making some marks on paper. Okay, so this is one of my cats. This is Peter Pineapple when he was little. <laughs> so when we draw a gesture, gestures are all about the big picture. Like what, um, what is the overall lean 
of the pose. What is the biggest shape like? Um, so in my case, I'm working kind of with rhythms, like what are the overall curves? So it's not so much about details. And I should mention um, that I'm not a cat drawing expert whatsoever. <laughs> I'm not even much of a cat person, to be honest. And I know, I know that a lot of you love cats and you're like, what? You're not a cat person? <laughs> but I love any animal. So I'm not saying I don't like cats. I'm just saying, you know, there are others that I like. Um, but but what, I want, what I mean to say is I, I'm not a cat drawing expert, so I'm not teaching you how to draw cats today. I'm teaching you, once we get to the longer poses, I'm teaching you how to use your insight about an animal's skeletal structure to improve your drawings. That's what I'm here for tonight. So if I say things that aren't technically accurate, you can correct me and I'm not going to, um, you know, be offended by that, but I will show you, as I said, how, how to use skeletons to make your drawings better. And, and whatever I teach you tonight, you can transfer that to horses, to um, cows, to human people, <laughs> as opposed to the non-human people. So I should ask, and I know that a lot of you are drawing or maybe you're not even logged in and you can't participate in the chat, but um, if you can, I'd love to hear if you're a cat person. Like, um, are you here because you love cats and uh, it's your jam and you just can't get enough of them? Or are you just because you like drawing in general and, you know, an any animal will suffice? Um, uh, I'd, love to, I'd love to hear anything that you want to share in the chat. All right, <laughs> this is my friend's cat, Buddy, and he's kind of a jerk. Um, he looks all cute, and then as soon as you get too close, he'll swipe ya. Typical cat. So look, when, when I begin uh, my, my gestures, um, I'm, I'm looking for the big connecting arc, like rather than looking for the individual parts, I'm looking at just like big flowy movements. Lindsay's a cat person and she loves to draw. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Their skeletons are wacky, Hannah. I, I, I did a little bit of studying up and they're so flexible and I'll talk more about this later. But yeah, they're, I mean, you know, that's why I love studying anatomy, whether it's people anatomy, animal anatomy, um, because everything is so ingeniously um, built. Everything is perfect for its function. And this is quickly becoming the ugliest drawing I've ever done. That's okay. But yeah, see everything like on a skeleton, there's nothing that doesn't have a purpose. Like there's not a single little bump on a bone that isn't there because it's... Um, holding something up, allowing the animal to do something special. <laughs> Kija, you just in for any animal. You're not particularly into animals. Oh, I didn't realize that this wasn't really focused all the way. Kija, this is a cat you sent me. So, you know, if we do have camps, I do have to out myself as a dog person. Um, so I know if I'm getting some hate for that, that's okay. <laughs> but um, 
but yeah, in terms of drawing animals, I mean, you know, that's for me personally, that's what got me into becoming an artist. I, I found my great grandfather's sketchbooks, or actually they were my grandfather's sketchbooks. And he had like all these sketches of horses and cows and then um, little landscapes and like like some, some people portraits too, but just like, you know, seeing how he was able to capture like the life around him um, really inspired me that that's something that's possible and that's something that I want to attain for myself. And since I'm such a animal nut, um, like animals have always been like my, my, my touch stone alongside portraits. Like I also love drawing faces. So look, I'm, I'm, I'm finding what's the kind of connecting arc here. Like this goes from the head over into the rib cage, into um, the hips, into the stretched out foot. So always for um, gestures, seeing the big picture. And the other thing that's important, I, at least in my opinion, when you draw gestures is that you draw with chutzpah. Um, it might not be 100% accurate, uh, it might not be pretty, but you know, at least you have conviction. Okay, so let me make this just a little bit bigger here. Now that I know that the outstretched poses are over. And I put that little skeleton in the corner so you have something to reference as I draw so you know what I am thinking about when I draw. Um, so we have five minutes to go and that's going. So even though I will be focusing on the skeletal structure, I'm still beginning with a gesture because I need to start somewhere. I need to kind of get the car rolling. And I allow myself these very loose lines. I'm drawing pretty light, which doesn't show up too good on the camera, but so be it. Okay, so now that I have a, my, my starting point, um, I'm going for my three major masses. Remember, um, head, rib cage, pelvis. So, um, I'm, and I'm not kind of haphazardly drawing these shapes. I'm trying to be accurate um, in regard to their scale. Like how, how big is the head in relationship to the rib cage? How close or far are they apart from each other? And so a cat's rib cage is fairly small. And of course, cats, they're so deceptive because they have all this fluff. They have all this extra flabby skin, especially our pet cats that don't do a lot of running around. Um, but you know, so it's a fairly small rib cage. And then for, um, once I have these two, I'm not gonna seek out this kind of J-like shape. Um, and I'm not sure if you can see my cursor, but if you can, do you see this here? That's where that top bump right here is. So right here where my cursor is, that's this corner of the pelvis. And then back here, right under the tail, is where this back bump is. So now I have these three major masses. And now I'm gonna go for the shoulder blade. So the shoulder blade with cats, um, they're, they're, they're opposing this angle. And it's, it's one of the parts that allows them to be so flexible. Um, they don't have a collarbone. And they can literally cross their their shoulder blades in front of each other if they needed to. Um, so once I have shoulder blade, um, pelvis, I'm getting into the limbs and I'm literally only interested in the angle of the limb and the length of the limb. 
So um, I'm looking for this shoulder bump here and kind of this indentation right there. Then we have this bump, this high point here, which is basically the elbow for them. And then right in here, we have this um, break until they get into their carpals. So carpals, that's for us, our palm bones. And then they walk on their tippy toes. And I'm just gonna draw a little box for, for their claw pad. So let's see if I have time for the back here. So this is where their femur goes. Their femur is longer than their upper arm bone. That's where they have a little kneecap. Kneecap is not that important for us artists. It's just kind of interesting to know where it is. Fairly short. I'm getting a few messages on my computer um, that my streaming software is doing something funky. I hope we're still going. Um, so I've brought this up to high. Let's bring this down. So as I said in the intro, I'm not interested in drawing a finished drawing of a cat tonight. That that's not what this is about. Um, what this is about is kind of getting better at recognizing the skeletal landmarks on a cat, um, starting to file away some of this information of what a cat skeleton is like. So in future drawings, when I draw cats in the future, that I can draw from that, no pun intended, that I can, um, so that I have this database to tap into. So I begin with my gesture here. And so also in the intro, what I mentioned is these sketch sessions. Um, I, I, I do see them as a training ground not a performance place. This is not for me to show off how great I am because um, you know there's plenty I have to learn and I'm grateful I get to learn it alongside you guys. And it's, it's cool that we get to kind of get better at the same time together. Okay, so see I, I, I've laid in the gesture. I'm already starting to think a little bit about the skeleton. So now I'm gonna get more specific about where do I sense the skull ending? What kind of shape is the simplified shape? It's kind of like egg-like, especially if you have a side view, you get a little bit of that um, nasal bone area. Um, then rather than getting into shoulder blades, I do the three major masses first. Um, oh, thanks Kija, I'm glad to hear that. It's um, working out that didn't disconnect or anything weird. So aside from um, placing your skeletal notations, if you so will, aside from them giving you shapes, simple shapes to work with, simple shapes to provide an underdrawing for you, you can then quickly, easily take these shapes and make them into forms. You see how I made this into a form by kind of snapping a cross contour around it. Um, also, so now that I have my three major masses, let me make this a little bit broader here. I can now use the spine. See, the spine is great. The spine is a a means to orient your form. Saying, um, I'm seeing a little bit of the other side here. Not much, but a little bit. It's not a pure profile that I'm seeing. 
This is my letter J. In this, in this pose, it's flipped to an L. So let's go into the shoulder blade. So the shoulder blade also, depending on, so on this side, you can see it. Uh, it really pushes up. Uh, it pushes up beyond um, the, the spine there. Uh, it, sometimes it could be mistaken as a dorsal um, spine from, from the vertebrae, but it's not. Like if there's weight on it, it pushes up beyond the line of the, the spine. Short upper foreleg. And then here's that elbow bump. That's something we can see because there's a point. You see this point right there where the cursor is? That's where that elbow bump is. And when I draw the bones, I'm not thinking about like, you know, where's there a bump on the bone? I'm just thinking how long is this thing? And I know it tapers. Like it's broader up here and then it gets narrower as I get down. Um, then I get into the carpals and the paw pad. Oh, time's already over. Let's move the new piece of paper. So this is my other cat. This is Maru. So she was a stray cat and I couldn't help myself, had to feed her because she was skinny, skinny as hell and you know, just clearly in, in distress. And so I um, started feeding her and our plan was that once she was um, tame enough, we'd grab her and get her to the vet and get her neutered or fixed or whatever you call it. And um, of course, some neighborhood tomcat got to her first, so that's why she had Peter Pineapple and two other kittens, which we have found some good homes for. Um, it wasn't something we planned for. Okay, gesture. Now I'm seeking out um, the three major masses. Just shapes for now. Bringing it a little bit to the point, up to a point. And um, what you can do right away, if you'd like, is you can find the center line to indicate the orientation of the head without getting into detail, without making this a portrait of her. It's just saying, I'm seeing a lot of this side and I'm seeing a little bit of the other side. So then let's find the rib cage, egg, and you just gotta guesstimate. Where do you get a sense under all this fur? Where, where do you get a sense for this kind of um, egg-like form to end? And then let's look at the back here. So um, before I get into the pelvis, I'm going to now run my, my center line down the neck, in between the shoulder blades, because here I definitely see that far side, right? So now I can use my skeleton, the spine, to tell the orientation to the viewer. I'm seeing mainly um, this side, but I'm also seeing a little bit of the other side. And that spine translates this for, for us. That's what spines are good for. Like in a, in a human drawing, that's what you use the spine for. You're orienting your form and the, you're orienting the rotation of your form. Okay, so let's get back to finding the pelvis here. So the thing with the pelvis is that um, if you have, if you see both sides, you wanna connect those two sides. So it becomes like an axle. Uh, and that's great because later, like if, if this is just an underdrawing, then you can um, kind of use this to make sure that any details you put on, that they will organize well. Like so that one side feels like it belongs to the other side. And 
and I barely get a sense of that part sticking back. Let's do the shoulder blades. So here, because it's kind of, she's pushing up. And let me remember it's this way. So this is like what I love to do when I practice on my own, uh, which I'd love to do more, but at least I get to do it with you guys, is I have my animal drawing book out, uh, open to the page of whatever animal I'm studying. And um, then I reference, you know, I have my reference image, whether it's a real life animal in front of me, most likely it's more photograph. But then I, I compare the page in the animal drawing book where I see the skeleton um, compared to my photo reference. Um, what do I need to remember? So see the, the short forearm here, and then we have that longer elbow to wrist segment. And so how do you know um, where this bone ends? You always want to look for clues. So if you look at the cursor, oh, I can't do that because it'll pop up the bar. But you look, look for the bend in the contour. You see the bend right here in the contour? Um, that's where your bone ends. Okay. Another Peter Pineapple. Let's do a challenging pose. I don't know if it's challenging. It's fun. It's um, an active pose. <laughs> I I was soliciting um, cat images, and I was calling all my friends who I know have cats. I was texting them like, "Hey, I'm I'm doing a sketch session on 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 cat anatomy. Um, can can you send me some pictures of your cats?" Because, you know, I have my own cat pictures, but most of the time they're just lounging around. And so, of course, every picture that they send me is just cats lounging around. Cats just sitting around, not doing anything. And I really wanted to have some, like, more active poses. So I tried to get a good mix for us to work from. But, um, you know cats. They're just sitting around all day, waiting to get waited on. Okay, got my gesture. Let's go step by step. I always like, with, with, with animals, I like to begin with heads. When I draw people, I always encourage my students to um, begin with the torso. But with animals, I kind of, especially if there's lots of skin, like if it's a very taunt animal, like horses, it's easy to begin with the torso. But on, on cats and dogs, especially if it's kind of like a wrinkly kind of a, cat dog thing. Um, I like like to get my feet going or my, my feet wet by beginning with the head. That was a strange way of saying that, my feet going. Okay, so got my head. So then I'm thinking, okay, where, where do I get that sense of this kind of ovoid rib cage. And again, it's, it's pretty small. So um, on humans, you know, though the way you can tell that the rib cage is ending is you're looking for the squishy middle, right? So where on, on the model do you see, first of all, the narrow part of the waist, but then also um, where do you see skin folds and like a twist and all that? Okay, so I'm gonna add my so if I don't see the spine, I'll use the breastbone. So here I have a, a center line opportunity with the breastbone. So the head here is turning left a little bit. The breastbone is, breastbone is definitely turning towards the right. So I'm kind of translating. This is facing this way. This is um, coming at me this way. And now I wish I didn't pick this pose because I have no idea what the pelvis is up to in this pose. Um, so I'm just going to... I'm trying to think, okay, it's a box, right? So, and I'm seeing the underside. And then that box has a little crease in it here. So, and that's exactly why I like doing these sketch sessions because it's, again, it's not about performing. It's about like coming up to your um, edge, noticing, oh, this is where I have a knowledge gap. 
and then you can dig in and and do some research so for me this is the underside of the pelvis this is that back part that kicks out their sit bone then here's that upper leg kneecap would be here lower leg and then the heel is right there i'm gonna have my little hot pad so they almost look like um <laughs> skeletal big surprise no i meant to say um they look um almost like a marionette you know let's see so this upper leg so it comes out of the pelvis it angles this way it should be in line with what's going on over there. And then I have the lower leg kind of getting overlapped by the tarsal. So the tarsals are heel to paw pad. So tarsus, that's kind of like the, the major mass of our foot. So you see heel overlapping your lower leg, overlapping that back leg. Okay. Let me scoot the kitty over. I, I'm noticing that she's getting cut off for you. And the, the tail is not in the picture anyway, so that's as big as she's going to get. Beginning as, as usual with my gesture. The way I think about my gesture is my placeholder, my, my very light scaffolding, it's my safety net. In the safety net, just make sure that I don't miss what's happening in the pose. <laughs> I'm glad you like the Peter Pineapple pose, Hannah. I try to get some cute, cute pictures. So I was saying is the, the gesture is my safety net, but it's a light, it's more like a spider web net, you know, it's, it's nothing, nothing solid. It's, it's always erasable. Um, but it's, it's making sure that I don't miss that I don't miss what the pose is all about. You know, it's so easy when you get into the details right away that you miss the big picture. That you miss, oh, this was about a twist, and now my twist got all watered down. Okay, got this. Let's do some dissection without harming anybody. <laughs> And um, speaking of dissection, um, I, I used to, when I started teaching um, anatomy, like figure, figure anatomy for people, for, for artists wanting to draw um, humans better, um, that's, that's, that's where my love for anatomy started, just like teaching that class and just getting so enamored with it all. Um, I then, you know, became hyper aware of it and, and, and I started to pick up fresh roadkill, like not nothing old, nothing gross, but I mean, like if I, if I could tell like, oh man, this is like, you know, just must have gotten run over and like it's not all squished or whatever. Um, and then I would dissect, like in particular squirrels because they're just everywhere. Um, and it's fascinating how similar squirrels are. Like, I mean, any animal, but in particular squirrels are so similar to the human anatomy and um, it just gives you a whole new level of appreciation for this, these fragile bodies that we have. Okay, 
head, rib cage. So again, I'm trying to get a sense for where does the squishy middle of the cat, like where does that first belly fold start, you know? That's where I'm going to end my, my shape for the rib cage. And I'm, I'm being mindful of how I orient that shape. Is it, is it horizontal? How much is it slanting up? Um, and now I'm gonna get to the, the, the hips. Um, so I know that that piece that kicks out, that's where that's sitting on. And I'm looking for a bump kind of along the back that might be a, a clue. It's connected with a center line. So this is great because we have, um, you see a little bit of the, the far side of the neck. So I'm gonna bring the center line, the spine, down here, here. And I'm gonna make sure that there's some space in between. And then here it becomes the edge. So the spine here. It's telling me I'm seeing a little bit of the far side, but here it starts to twist away. Oh man, I want to get to the shoulder blades. Bummer. Oh wow, five minutes is short. Let's see if I can fit him over here. So this is my neighbor's cat when she, he was little. I think his name is Georgie, I'm not sure. I thought it was a cute picture. to keep myself from getting into the details too soon. It's always a temptation. Okay. So this is my starting point. I'm gonna see if I can be a little bit quicker on this one so I can get to some of the back leg like, and the actual limb stuff. Um, so my center line here would be around here. I'm seeing a lot on the right side, not, not so much on the left. So again, I don't, this is not meant to be macabre, but like a thought experiment I will make is like if I sliced through the neck here, like, you know, where would that, that, that slice, like that open part of that rib cage, what would that oval look like? Like that's kind of like a, a thought experiment that I'm running through as I'm trying to isolate my skeletal structures. And then get a sense for the ribs up to about this point. That's when I'm going to close it off. And then I definitely have um, a center line in the front. So again, we use the, the skeletal structure to give us center lines, to give us landmarks, to give us axles, um, to give us simple forms. Um, it can give us quite a bit. So I'm going to leave the pelvis because I want to get into some of the forelegs here. So let's, let's get the shoulder blades put in, and we have the slant, the top slants back, the front slants forward, it's all kind of covered in fur, then I have that short upper arm bone that has a very severe backwards angle. And it's so different from us humans. So this is something that often feels foreign and, and strange, but it helps me to then kind of reorient myself with that, with that elbow high point. It's like, where's the elbow high point? Wherever that elbow, elbow, 
elbow high point is, that is um, where that, that humerus, that upper arm bone ends. And then again, let me see. All right, under the pause symbol is where the break is for the carpals. And, and those carpals, by the way, let me see if I can bring this out. Like in humans, very similar. They're like this, I'm gonna draw this figure over here so you know what I mean. They're like this curvy sponge almost. So this here is like that. And then you got our paw cluster. Let's see if I can get. So here is another example for an, an axis where you can connect this shoulder point with a far shoulder point. Now, a lot of this is guessing, you know, I'm making my best guess. And probably later what I will do, and I recommend you do this too, um, you take your best guesses that you made on the page and then you compare it to whatever animal anatomy book that you have. And you see, oh, I guess there I could have made this a little bit longer. Um, so it's, it's never about just like, you know, doing one drawing and then ignoring how it came out. You always want to stretch yourself and see if you can learn something from it. Let me just put my new page. So Maru, this is Maru again, my cat, she's the most vertical cat. Like, she's totally crazy. Like, she has these bursts of energy, like any cat will, but like, she has these bursts of energy. Um, she used to be outdoors, right? So when she was just outdoors, she would just run up a tree, like the whole thing, like where we have like this pole where, where we have um, um, like backyard lights, like a string of backyard lights strung up. And she would climb up that whole pole, just no problem, just like straight up vertical. Quite the cat. Okay, so ideally, if I remember, most of the times I will, I will do my gesture and then I'll pause. And I pause just for a couple of seconds, kind of comparing, did I capture what I wanted to capture? Like, or something like majorly standing out is like, ooh, no, you, um, that angle is different or that rhythm is, is different. Okay. So here is my, my, so for the cranium, I usually go just for a ball. Um, and then I add this little face mask, the, the snout onto it. And then when I have it, the last thing I, I'll try and do is, is do the center line. Because remember that center line is such a quick and easy way of translating um, if you're seeing the far side or not. I'm trying to find or get a sense for that collar um, where the rib cage would begin. And if you can't tell, you make your best guess. And as I said, then later on, pull out any reference book that you have in your bookshelf and see how you did. And then, you know, if, it, if you did not all that great, don't beat yourself up over it. Just um, notice. Notice, oh, I see I made everything way too big or made this rib cage way too small. It's actually much more massive. I didn't realize this. Um, and then then you'll remember, you know, because like um, when, most, most of the times, so like one, once we become aware of a shortcoming, um, you'll file it away and 
and you remember it. Um, so as, as some of you may know, I, I grew up in Germany. I came to the United States for college and then got married and so now I live here. Um, but when I first um, came to the United States, uh, you know, my English wasn't all that great. And so I, I had an accent and I would say certain words funny, but people would point it out to me, like, you know, they kind of like, oh, this sounds cute or, um, I like how you say vampire. I used to say vampire. Um, and, but like, as soon as somebody would point it out to me, I would file it away. It's like, oh, okay, you say it differently. Uh, and then I, I would change how I say it. Um, and so I, I don't have much of an accent anymore because of that. And I think like in, in drawing, it can be similar, you know, where um, when you compare things, and that's where teachers are good. When the teacher um, points out to you, um, hey, you have this tendency to make this too long all the time. If you're a good listener, you'll, you'll make an adjustment in the future. Okay, so see, this is my pelvis box. Um, this is the femur bone. So I'm trying to look for this corner, um, kind of where her fur is kind of tufting out here. That's where the knee is. Then I know where the heel is because that's so easy to see. So you're, you're kind of connecting the dots, right? Like it's not all spelled out for us. It's like, uh, I like to say it's like an Easter egg hunt. Get the clues. <laughs> all right, here's another challenging one because you know, these haven't been hard enough. They, they haven't been hard enough already. So we need, we need something harder. <laughs> So I pose like this, that's, I mean, so strong, so clear about this kind of crescent shape. Um, and, you know, if you're like, holy shit, like this is so hard, I, have, I had no idea, I'm way out of my league, um, then I, I want to remind you, don't take it then as, as a boot camp where you're just kind of, working yourself into the ground. If, 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 if you feel like it's out of your league, then take this as your playground and, and make it fun. Like, how can you make this fun? Like, if, if you're struggling, if you're getting frustrated, don't allow yourself to go there. Like, pick up like a ridiculously colored marker and, and start drawing with marker. Um, do something just that, that, that tickles you, that, that makes it fun again and kind of, you know, don't don't care. See if you can't not care that that the outcome isn't isn't that great. Um, the important part is that you draw. The important part is that you're moving your pencil. That you're taking an hour for yourself for your creativity. That's what counts. Okay. Gesture. Plot it out. Let's see. <laughs> let's see where we'll end up. So, the the cool thing is I can get a good sense for this center line here. And like right around here, I get a sense for that. It's called the thoracic arc, um, that arc of the ribs ending. So I'm going to end my egg shape here. And then it goes underneath the shoulder blades. Something like that. I'm going to end it around here. And then the opening, the neck, neck attachment would be somewhere here, maybe. Um, the spine, it's not visible, like it here comes out to connect to the head, but then it kind of disappears behind the rib cage here. Center line for the head, get that orientation. And I wanna get the shoulder blade in before I try the, the back. And I think you guys, this is the last pose that I have time. I have two more pictures though. So I'm gonna um, just draw until I'm finished with that. And then I'll have one more picture that's not timed. Um, when I was making the 
when I was making the video of the reference images, it didn't um, save the last two images for some reason. Okay, so shoulder blade. I feel like the upper arm, I can't tell where that is or how that goes. I can tell where the, where the elbow begins. So let me put that in. So you see, I'm, I'm making my, my Easter egg hunt. Um, I, I, I kind of got a sense for the shoulder blade. I kind of have a sense for the elbow. And then I guess the upper arm bone must, must connect these two somehow. And then right around here, we have the carpals. And then we have our paw pad. Sense for the elbow here. Carpals, paw pad. Let's get to the back here. Oh boy. <laughs> it's a box. That's what I'm telling myself. It's a box. What else do I know about this? It's flat and it kicks out in the back. So So if you're having a hard time drawing boxes, <laughs> now you know why that perspective comes in handy. I'm just gonna go for that. And then we need, of course, our femur bone. Ends at the kneecap, so here's the kneecap. Kneecap. And again, um, a great thing to do is connect connect um, the two sides. Right now I'm noticing there's more of a turn um, because I see more of an angle here. So that's something I missed. So this is a correction I would make. Might as well, because we're here. Let's turn this box a little bit more like this. And then this is gonna come up more like that. So now I have this angle. Um, the lower leg kind of is overlapped or it's being overlapped by the femur. And then I have the tarsals and the paw. Same thing, lower leg is kind of here and then the tarsals and the paw. So as usual, I keep um, reminding you guys when I do these practice drawings, so sketch sessions, to me, they're all about practice. They're all about stretching, growing, learning, and they rarely yield beautiful drawings. They always kind of yield kind of a mess, but as long as I'm thinking along and through the mess, I, I see it as a win. So let me, we have time for one more pose. Let me grab one more pose. Get this one out of the way. All right. Let's do the kittens. I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of hard not to end on kittens. Push this up, see if I can make it bigger. And you choose your own kitten. Let's see, I'm gonna start a new pad of paper. The paid brother. I'm gonna do the stretched out one. So that one, um, so these are Maru's kittens. You can see Peter in the, in the back. So the one that's hanging on the, on the basket, um, that's a girl, she's huge. Her name was Chubber Jewel. And she was wild. Oh, 
we'll just do five minutes because we're already at time. We're already at the full hour. And let's end with something fun and cute. And what you can do is see now that you've done um, now that you've done your your workout, so to speak. Now that you've paid your dues, if you want to, like you know, if you really enjoy drawing cats, you can watch the video again. Put me on mute this time and just use the reference, and then see, um, like if you if you don't have to do a workout around it. Like, what kind of art do you want to create with this? Like, if you had the choice, like, would you now start focusing on the shapes and kind of create a, a silhouette-driven um, piece of art of one of these poses? Or would you um, really focus on rendering some form? Uh, or would you choose some materials that would allow you to work on, on the furry texture? Um, but, but whatever it is you'd focus on, I bet you that you're going to feel a bit more confident because you're, you're going to recognize certain points on the cats. And so it feels like you're, you're not... Um, you're, you're not walking in the dark anymore. You kind of have like little, little guideposts. Oh, you're welcome, Chris. Glad you had a good time. Okay, so here's my skull form, center line. Let's see if I can get the rib cage. Again, the question with the rib cage is, where do I get a sense for the soft underbelly to begin? And then once I have it, my next question is, where's the center line? So on the underside, that would be the, the breastbone. And the reason why we want that is because it helps you um, orient the, oops, the form and space. All right, so let's see, what can I do to plot out the pelvis? So I'm looking for, where do I get a sense for the butt? So that's kind of what I'm going for, for the pelvis shape. Clean that up a little bit. And then let's find, let's find the shoulder blade. So again, with the shoulder blade, I, I have to talk to myself when I do this. I, I remember the shoulder blade, the, the top is back. The bottom of the shoulder blade is forward. And then I have the lower, uh, the upper arm. Then I have the elbow. and forearm, and then I get the carpals, and the paw. So if, if you got some of these drawings and some of them turned out good, even if it's just the gestures, or if you did another um, pose at the end, kind of in your own style, I'd love to see that work. So if you share your artwork on Instagram, I'd love it if you could tag me. Um, so you just want to tag at Cura Studios and then I'll see um, what you did. Because this is kind of like half the fun for me that I'm not just drawing in, the, in a vacuum, but that this is a little bit of a community and um, I get to cheer you on. So I, I, I love doing that. You can also, if you don't want to post it on your feed, uh, it's not that great. Um, just send me a DM with a picture of it. And I can give you a virtual high five. Okay, let's see. So the back, like I'm just going to wrap up the back leg and then we'll jump off. So 
kneecap is right around here. And now I'm getting lost. I'm not quite sure. I think this and then the heel. It's confusing when they're in these unexpected positions. It's so hard to make sense of it. So here's my upper leg bone. So as I said, um, anytime I study animal anatomy, I always have a reference book nearby because I don't know this stuff by heart and, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you don't either. So, you know, if you felt overwhelmed at times today, um, just know it's because th these are, um, this is new territory for most of us. And so it's, it's best to chart new territory with, with a map. So um, a good um, animal drawing book that I recommend, there are of course many, uh, but there's one by, um, it's called the Famous Artist School, Step-by-Step -step Method How to Draw Animals. I'll put it in the, in the comments at the end. Um, I really like that one. It's very, very good. Um, and I also like Gottfried Bummes. He's a German um, artist. So I'll leave it at this. Um, let me switch my camera so I can wrap up and kind of summarize. Um, I, hope, I hope you learned something. If, if nothing else, I hope you, you stretched yourself and you kind of found some new um, uh, points where you can grow. Um, what I wanted to wrap up with is just um, kind of reminding you how to use skeletons when you draw. The first thing is you don't use them so you can copy the all the alien looking details on the skeleton. That's not the point. The point is that a skeleton provides you with simple shapes like eggs and, and spheres and, um, and boxes or rectangles. And once you have those simple shapes, you can flesh them into forms. So from a circle into a sphere, from an oval into an egg, and from a rectangle into a box. Then you can use spines or breast bones to use them as center lines to orient, like to, to turn the, the form on your page, letting people know I'm seeing not just the side that's close to me, but I'm also seeing the side that's a little bit further away from me. And then the trick is once you see the furry animal with all its folds, um, you're going on an Easter egg hunt and you're looking for bumps, like you're looking for the elbow bump, uh, you're looking for the knee bump, you're looking maybe for a bump close to the spine that might be part of the pelvis, and then you're trying to connect them. Because in the end, what you're using the skeletal structure for is to structure and organize your drawing so you don't just have floating details everywhere. And let's see, um, that's pretty much it. Um, oh, I'm glad, Lindsay, that you had a good time. So glad. And um, thank you for anybody who contributed cats. I know Keija, you gave me some cats. Lindsay, you gave me some cats and uh, my neighbors too. Um, by the way, if you're not already on my email list, you need to get your butt on my email list. I, I write e weekly emails where I give kind of anecdotal stories that kind of help you get back or stay in your drawing practice. It always announces to what I do for the next sketch session next week. Um, and if I have any classes coming up, I know, announce them in the email as well. So you can get on that email list and in the description below is a link. It's um, called curaoc.com forward slash three questions. And the three questions is because when you sign up, you get a free workbook. And that free, work, that free workbook will help you um, make your drawings better with just applying three simple questions. Uh, I think you'll get some great value from that. And I'd love to have you um, on my email list so I can talk to you like a friend can. Um, all right, that's it from me. Um, if you have anything else um, that you want me to cover in future sketch sessions, next time we're doing um, things. So I'm, I'm thinking about doing landscapes. I'm thinking about doing value studies and landscapes. But if you have anything burning under your fingernails that you want to get to, let me know so I can cover it. So we cycle through figure, portraits, animals, and things. So let's see. Um, glad, glad you loved it, Bill. So happy. Oh, I know you had you had a kitty that you, you lost, so I'm glad you've got your, your feline fixed tonight. 
Okay, well, I'm going to hop off. So good to see you. Tag me in your drawings on Instagram. Can't wait to see what you did. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.